Hi everybody, I'm Carl Grafour. This year I've assisted the Arizona Department of Education with the design of Arizona's new computer science standards. Now we're creating these webinars to help teachers quickly get up to speed on the basics of computer science, those new standards, and hopefully help you figure out how to implement them in your own classrooms. This is our webinar series three, computer science integration into other disciplines. The discipline we'll be discussing today both language arts and social studies. There will be three different webinar series in total. Series one discussed what is computer science. Series two discussed the five essential concepts of the computer science standards. In this series, series three, we'll discuss the integration of computer science into other disciplines. Each series of webinars will have between three and five short videos. So where are they? One well, of the approved Arizona computer science standards, they're available for download at the address shown there on the screen. On the same page, there's also a download link for the standards broken out by essential concept instead of by grade. Today's takeaway, computer science should not, cannot be taught in a vacuum. It can and should be integrated into other subjects, both to be taught there and to be reinforced there. So what does computer science have to do with language arts or social studies? Well, computer science can allow students to communicate more creatively and through different mediums. Students could discuss natural language processing. Things like Siri, Alexa, and Cortana are examples. And how not only have they revolutionized human computer interaction, but what the future of those actually is. They could then conceive and design, at least on paper, what the next generation of these would look like and what they can do and how they can help and maybe how they could help teach. In language arts, finding repetitious words or phrases in poetry or in music and replacing those in order to find the smallest possible amount of space that that piece can take up correlates to data compression and transmission. It also teaches about how encryption works and applies to cybersecurity. And not to leave any of the disciplines out, but the URL at the bottom is uh, Sonic Pi. And Sonic Pi is a free online music project that lets students create music through coding. It is amazing and free. So what does computer science still have to do with language arts or social studies? Well, computer science allows students to choose not only their communication modality, but the level of interaction within that sphere. Some possible examples of what a computer science project in relationship or in relation to that would be to maybe program a choose your own adventure book kind of story. Students could also introduce conditionals and variables in order to reuse code and trigger events later in the story. This teaches both pseudocode and actually writing it, actual code if the project was to be finished, what's called decomposition of both the code and the story in order to do it properly. And this project could actually be applied to any subject area simply by changing the context. If you substituted art, you could actually create a walkthrough art gallery of student or classwork. For social studies, the content could simply be made into a historical fact to become nonfiction work. The top URL on the screen leads to a place called Experience Play. It's an open education resource that contracts curriculum for using Twine. Twine is an open source coding language in the classroom in order to engage students in digital storytelling or game design. It covers the pedagogical themes ranging from digital literacy to peer-to-peer -peer learning and the idea of students as creators. In that same vein, in social studies, 
students could design apps to help with or even solve relevant social issues. And again, even if not actually coded, the project can be designed and pseudocoded, written out in natural communication that explains how the code would work. Language arts could use the exact same activity and create an app to solve an issue from some famous literary work or figure. Maybe they could invent a dating app for Romeo and Juliet or something of that nature. And the bottom URL there, pencil code. Pencil code is an online coding activity that allows users to draw, to make music, and to code their own adventures. It's very simple, but it doesn't offer very many high-end features. But the best part about it is like experience play, it's free. It's just another alternative. But you have no computer science curriculum, so now what? Well, code.org has an extensive free listing of projects for teachers, and that's the URL down there at the bottom. They offer a full one-year curriculum for free at the exact same URL. The curriculum is broken down into six units. Unit one, problem solving, two, web development, three, animation and games, four, the design process, which specifically talks to the broader social impacts of computing, five, data and society, and unit six, physical computing. They also offer numerous, numerous grant-funded PD opportunities at the same website. The URL shown is the landing page for a complete computer science curriculum written for middle schools by Harvey Mudd College. It's broken down by quarter, trimester, and semester groupings. In my experience, this is probably one of the better free curricula that's available out there. It goes into all subjects and all subject areas. So again, today's takeaway, computer science should not and cannot be taught in a vacuum. It can, should, and must be integrated into other subjects to be both taught and reinforced there. Computer science doesn't belong in a computer science lab. It belongs in a social studies room. It needs to be reinforced in a language arts room. It should be alive and kicking in the art room. Folks, thank you for your time.